USC has finally released the long-awaited announcement about commencement, and it will be in person. We have details. March Madness is back, but players are in a bubble. We'll take you to Indianapolis to see what COVID restrictions are in place. Plus, we'll hear from head coach Andy Enfield and SC fans as we get closer to the Trojans' first NCAA game. Half the hustle. He's fast enough to do it. Coast to coast for the little guy. Go! How about that? That's what he does best. It has been more than 700 days since the last NCAA tournament, but March Madness is now underway. Good evening, I'm Olivia Novato, reporting from Hermosa Beach. And I'm Jillian Carroll, reporting from Los Angeles. We'll have more on March Madness in a moment. But first, we have breaking news. USC has announced in-person commencement plans. USC will host in-person commencement celebrations in May at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. These socially distanced ceremonies are for the classes of 2020 and 2021. Commencement attendance will be limited. Each graduate can only bring two guests and they must be people who live in California. Ceremonies will take place twice a day from May 14th to the 25th. Graduates will be invited to walk the stage at one ceremony with their school or degree cohort. Students must RSVP at usc.marchingorder.com. All activities will also be broadcast online and on demand. And fellas, we're playing basketball. Love it. The NCAA kicked off their 2021 tournament season today with a game between Texas Southern and Mount St. Mary's. The TSU Tigers won 60 to 52. Three more games are scheduled for tonight, including UCLA versus Michigan State. USC will make their 18th appearance at the NCAA tournament on Saturday. I'm Taylor Milliner reporting from LA. It's the first time the Trojans have competed since 2017. After an unusual season, USC coaches and players are looking forward to playing. You just don't get that level of excitement in the NBA or in a normal college uh, basketball game. Uh, even though some home arenas are, are exciting, like when we play UCLA at home and uh, or on the road in a rivalry game, that, that's exciting. But the NCAA is just a totally different the tournament is just a totally different experience from a fan's perspective and the players and coaches, you, you notice that. And uh, I think that's what is really special about March Madness. We have to do a, things a little differently. Uh, can't really go anywhere by ourselves. we got to let people know what we're doing. Um, but it's a great experience so far. The USC team is the number six seed in the NCAA tournament. While they have tough matchups in the West region, they also have Evan Mobley, who's projected to be the top three pick in the NBA draft. USC opens tournament play at 1.30 on Saturday against Drake University. If they win, they will play the winner of Kansas and Eastern Washington in the round of 32. I'm Liza Monasabian reporting from Los Angeles. After a full year of waiting to fill out the brackets, fans are going crazy for their favorite teams to hit the court. USC has been doing really well this year. Um, right now, I think in my bracket, I have them going all the way to the Elite Eight. I can see them getting that far, at least to the Sweet 16, beating Kansas. But um, yeah, we'll see how they do against um, Iowa. But I think they can beat Iowa for sure. We have Evan Mobley. We have a lot of shooters like Drew Peterson, Pajidi. Um, and we can definitely go on a run because I think the thing about March Madness that makes it interesting is that it's not necessarily about how well you did during the regular season, but it's more so about how streaky you can get. Um, and USC is, they're on a tear right now. The anticipation of it like being bigger this year is, has increased due to the fact that there wasn't March Madness last year. So I feel like I'm more excited because we missed it last year. I think uh, honestly, just the whole pandemic has shifted every way we watch sports. Uh, so to be completely honest, I think the past couple months have kind of gotten me used to this whole watching remote, not being able to hang out with people when you're watching and, and you know, online, there's a lot of ways through social media and, and all, all that to, uh, to connect. So, you know, I think I'm, I'm sort of ready for it. And given the past situation, I'm, I'm more excited than ever to watch this year. And for Dare Wolf, that means rooting for the underdog. Tomorrow, his money's on Colgate University. Well, pretty much everyone else will be betting that the Arkansas Razorbacks will mow right over Colgate. 
And while the competition is hot for all teams, the real win is being able to play in the first place. Like the NBA, college basketball officials agreed the safest way to play basketball was in a bubble. There will be some fan attendance, but the screaming crowds are long gone. The tournament starts in Indianapolis and stays there. There are new rules for the players as well. While they don't have to mask up on the court, everywhere else they do. Players and team staff take a COVID test daily, and so far, out of 2,300 tests, five people have tested positive. Coaches say it's just the way it is this year. You get your test, and then you have to get up again and do your test um, next calendar day or, or 12 hours apart, and then you'll have another practice walkthrough um, if everything clears, if you keep testing negative. Um, so you'll have that, and you just keep working and making the most of it. The bar for me is high. It's all 67 games played safely and responsibly and, and on time and on schedule. Um, I think we can accomplish that. As part of these regulations, teams will need seven days of negative tests before traveling. After arriving, teams will quarantine until they have two negative results. Then everyone will be tested daily. Players who test positive cannot compete. Teams will remain eligible as long as five players are available. Everyone must wear masks and socially distance unless competing. Health officers will monitor every team throughout the tournament. USC men's basketball will kick off tournament play this Saturday. Right now, we are going to talk to three basketball fans about the Trojans' odds of making it all the way. So I'm joined here today with Carlo Jimenez, Skylar Treple, and Sam Reno, and we are going to talk about USC in March Madness this year. So this is the first time since 2017 that USC is making an appearance in March Madness, and they have Pac-12 Coach of the Year. They have who some are calling the unicorn, Evan Mobley, out there. They have a number six seed, a 22-7 and seven regular season record. What are their odds in March Madness this year? Absolutely. You know, I think that USC has great odds in March Madness. I've been known to call Evan Mobley a unicorn regularly. The guy can do it all. He's one of the most athletic seven footers that I've ever seen in my life. He can go coast to coast. He can hit the three. He can defend. He can score from anywhere on the floor. And not just that, but they have X factors on the floor like Drew Peterson and Taj Edey. I think USC's odds are looking really good this year. Yeah, I think they're in a they're in a nice part of the bracket. You're talking about taking on a, a playing game, but then you probably would place a Kansas team who's dealing with COVID problems of their own. Then maybe you play an Oregon team who've you already beaten this year, and then you run into problems like Gonzaga. But I think the bracket, as tough as the West is, kind of plays to their favor. So I think they have a good shot. I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna take the alternate view. I don't I don't love their chances uh, in this tournament. You know, they don't secrete those very well. I think they have some tough matchups. A team like Kansas, who starting lineup averages almost 60 points a game. Teams that have depth and scoring have given USC trouble all year. So teams like Gonzaga, teams like Kansas, and even if Drake wins tonight, Drake has five starters averaging double figures. So I think they could give them trouble. I like them against maybe Iowa in a Sweet 16 matchup, but outside of that, I'm not, not high on their chances. All right. Well, you know, we're seeing some mixed reviews here, but also, you know, this is the COVID year of March Madness. And there are some teams that we usually see as staples in March Madness, like Duke and Kentucky, who won't be appearing this year. So the makeup is going to look a lot different, I think. But do you think USC has a better chance this year as compared to other years if they were to have qualified for March Madness? Absolutely, I do. We saw in the NBA bubble that the Miami Heat made it to the finals and different teams who you expected to do well didn't do as well. It is a strange year, but regardless, the Los Angeles Lakers still did win. Teams have to show out and play. But what I'm saying with this is that anything can happen. Miami won some of those games against the Lakers, but we have single elimination here. So anything, anything can happen. And that's why I really like USC's chances here and think they have a great chance to really pull off something special because even against those teams they run up against it's the COVID year so I think you're going to see a lot of surprising upsets and the teams that show up to play and have the best players have a strong chance to do very well yeah I mean I think USC's two biggest weaknesses are free throw shooting and inexperience they have one guy who's played in the tournament that's Chavez Goodwin with Wofford um, and when you talk about when big crowds big arenas where stadiums get loud especially maybe playing at Lucas Oil where it's a football stadium Free throws and end of game situations get tough and you need experience, but not having that crowd there, I think is hugely beneficial to a team that doesn't have that experience and can't shoot free throws very well.
Yeah, I completely agree. You know, maybe throughout the regular season, we sort of saw inexperience get teams like Kentucky or Duke or even Michigan State partly this year. But I think come tournament time, the inexperience, you know, will be helped by the lack of fans, the lack of sort of pressure from the environment in Indy. All right. Well, awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining us. March Madness is underway and we will see where it takes us. Every year, fans across the country make brackets for March Madness, hoping they'll pick the winning teams. Reporter Cambry Guest got some expert advice for filling out those brackets. A 47,000 square foot billboard in Indiana is now home to the world's largest bracket. It took 100 hours to print and four crew members scaling the side of a hotel to fill it out. Nearly 40 million Americans are filling out a bracket this year, just not quite this massive. One Oregon student is trying his luck with multiple championship picks. I've been doing brackets since I was like in the ninth grade in high school, I think. Um, I mean, I made seven this year. I honestly, like I make a few different brackets where I'll take like all the lower seeds in like the first round or something, just like mess around with it a bit. I do one where I do some my bias brackets as well. So that's the one where I obviously have Oregon winning the entire tournament. And I just like like the schools, like the, I pick the schools that I like the most on there to like compete and win essentially. The odds of having a perfect bracket for the NCAA tournament are one in 9.2 quintillion. And that's rounded down. To boost my chances, I spoke to basketball analyst Deshaun Tate to get some tips for success. This particular year in what has been 2020 slash 2021 hasn't shown us the unpredictability that can happen. I mean, March Madness is the most unpredictable three weeks in all of sports. Tate's first tip is to look at the guard play. It's evident that guards dictate the style of play and make championship teams. Tip number two is to look at the veteran status of the players. March Madness is high pressure. Experienced players often do better than first timers who don't know what it's like to be in a one and done scenario. And tip number three is to look beyond the players to the coaches. While players recycle every four years, coaches create a legacy. Tate says coaches make successful teams. At some point you have to say that I'm not gonna be the stubborn person. Uh, and then I am going to make what I feel like is the smartest and the safest decision and roll out with that. I'm, I'm going to pick Gonzaga to win this thing. Uh, one of the reasons which may not, you know, for some people, it may not have a lot to do with it. I don't know if you're a conspiracy theorist or whatever. Um, but the last time that Duke and Kentucky did not make it to uh, the NCAA tournament, which was in 1976, when Indiana won the national championship, Indiana was unbeaten at that time. Um, this year, you don't have a Duke in Kentucky, and there's only one remaining team that is unbeaten, um, which is Gonzaga. So that is definitely something that could happen. I just finished filling out my bracket on my phone to join my family's league and officially have Gonzaga as the last team standing. So get ready, because the madness starts today. For Annenberg TV News, I'm Cambry Guest. Everyone has been looking to get in on the action of March Madness picks, and that includes some major celebs. Barack Obama, Shaquille O'Neal, and many others are sharing their picks online. Barack Obama released his completed bracket on his website with Gonzaga as his top pick for the tournament. The official March Madness Twitter page also posted Chicago Sky forward Candace Owens' bracket, and she's also got Gonzaga as her number one. Shaquille O'Neal went with a unique pick with his alma mater, LSU. The NCAA also posted Dwayne Wade's bracket, and he has Michigan going all the way. March Madness, and sports in general, is more than just a game or a tournament. For many, it's a way to get back to normal and something to look forward to. Today, we spoke with two experts about the impact of the return of sports. One of the many good things that sports does for us is it creates a sense of stability. Uh, and that stability helps people recognize that there's going to be a tomorrow, that everything's going to work out, or at least gives you the impression that everything's going to work out, even in the most challenging of times. Sports is a part of uh, who we are and what we do. So it's important that we have it back in the fold. The one thing where people, no matter what color, race, sex, orientation, anything, we could all band together and, and root for our favorite team together, right? We might come from different places, different backgrounds, make different money, all kinds of stuff, but that's usually the uniter in this country. Honestly, I know sports have always been such an important part of my life, especially during quarantine. I would like watch like 
the Jordan doc or just reruns on ESPN. Just, you know, keeping yourself occupied with lit literally when there's nothing else to do. So it's definitely, sports are an important part of our lives. Absolutely. And, you know, it's just so cool that sports mirror so much of what's going on in the world and it gives people something to talk about, but also something to connect over. And now that live sports are back, like people can do that in real time. And I'm super excited that we're having a March Madness this year. Me too. It's, there's something special about March Madness. What team are you rooting for this year? Usually I'm a Duke girl through and through, but they did not qualify for the tournament this year. So I'm going to be cheering on the Trojans. Me too. I think it's only right that we support our school. There we have it. Well, that's it for this Thursday. Thanks so much for watching. From everyone here at CL Live, have a great night.